the next day. We go out, and here's that little seven-year-old boy. Same boy. But this time, all the color was back in his face. And he was out climbing trees and getting in fights with the other boys and, and running around and playing and do, getting into mischief, doing all the things a seven-year-old boy is supposed to do. And wasn't having one bit of problem breathing. And the father told me, said, God healed him. Thank you for praying. God healed him. Hallelujah. Can I tell you tonight, I didn't know the right words to say in a Spanish prayer, but I knew the power of the name of Jesus Christ. And I knew that if we prayed for Him, the Bible said the prayer of faith would save the sick and God would raise them up. And we trusted the Word of God that day. And that little boy went from that front porch and sometime in the night in his sleep, God completely healed his body. And that next day, he was able to run and jump and play and do all the things that he was supposed to do. And it was done by the power of God. Yes, sir. Things like that boost your faith when you see God do these works. And the next day, I found out exactly how much our faith needed to be boosted. We're in the service. The power of God is moving. And this man walks up to me with a baby in his arms. And the first of two miracles happened. I held a baby. Now, anybody that knows me real well knows that I am not, I love babies. Don't get me wrong, I love them. I like to look at them and I like for you to hold them. But I'm so big and so awkward and clumsy and I'm scared I'm going to drop them or break them or they're going to cry. I, it, it breaks my heart when somebody lays a baby in my arms and they start to cry. I immediately say, the kid doesn't like me. Never done anything to this kid and he already doesn't like me. All I did was try to hold him. First miracle, I held a baby. The father brings this child to me. And I couldn't, he was just weeping and weeping and I couldn't understand what he was trying to tell me. And he could tell I couldn't understand so he grabbed this baby's legs and he shook them. I have never seen a human being with limbs so limp in my life. It was almost as if this child didn't even have bones in his legs. His legs were so limp, they looked like you could have tied them in a knot. And I understood the child was lame. He couldn't, couldn't use his legs at all. And the father put the baby in my arms. And I got angry. Not because he put that baby in my arms. I was angry because of the condition of that child. Here was this little baby that had never done anything wrong. Never did anything but be born. And he was lame. Couldn't move his legs. Crippled. God... This little baby can't survive out here like this. These conditions are too primitive. A crippled child has no chance out here. Lord, this child is going to die. I walked all around that tent with that baby in my arms and I wept and I cried and I prayed. I walked around probably 15 minutes with that baby in my arms. And I stopped near the platform in the front. And I said, God, you know this baby can't live out here like this. In the name of Jesus Christ, God healed this baby. And a couple of minutes later as I'm holding that baby in my arms, all of a sudden I feel as that baby's legs... Kick straight out. And I'm holding this child in my arms who had never moved his legs before and all of a sudden, just as hard as he could kick. I didn't know it, but the father had been following me everywhere I had gone. 
He was walking right behind me everywhere I went. And I turned around and there he was standing behind me. And about the time I turned around with that baby, he kicked again. I thought we were going to have to tie daddy down with chains to keep him from jumping over the tent. As by the power of the Holy Ghost, God healed his crippled son. I can tell you God can still do it. We can read in the scriptures of in the days of Jesus how miracles happened, how the lame walked, how the blind saw, how the deaf heard, how the dumb spoke. But can I tell you, this wasn't 2,000 years ago. This was April of 2009. God is still doing what He's always done. God is still able to work miracles in the midst of His people. Hallelujah. We came back from that conference. <coughs> and I was asked to speak on a Saturday night at our church in Reynosa. We have six worship services a week between two churches. One in Reynosa and one in Rio Bravo. Almost every night we're in, we're in service somewhere. And the services there are different. Psalm service, just the choruses, usually last about an hour. And when I say an hour, I don't mean sing one chorus, stop. Sing a chorus, stop. I mean one hour of steady singing. Chorus after chorus after chorus after chorus. Some of the choruses, if I translated them into English, you wouldn't understand why we sing them. Enoch lived so many years, so many years, so many years. Enoch lived so many years and God took him. Hallelujah. That's the truth. I know that. I don't know that I wrote a course about it. But that's the truth. Things that we think are so simple. They sing unto God. And God blesses. And the Spirit of God begins to move. After about an hour of singing comes time of prayer. Our services are generally four, at least four hours long. And those are generally the short ones. Long worship services. So one Saturday night, we have our prayer, we have our prayer meeting, and we pray for an hour or so, hour, hour and a half, then we have preaching, then we have prayer again. And God had impressed on me from the scripture that said God worked special miracles by the hand of Paul, so that from his body went out handkerchiefs and aprons. And that through that, devils were cast, demons were cast out and the sick were healed. And I began to teach that night on just how able God was and how God could still do what He had always done. And I read that scripture and I had a bunch of cloths with me. And I began to give them out to anyone who would come. And the sister who leads our song services, I did not know that for months that sister had been suffering from chronic pain in her body. Was hurting so bad that she couldn't even get a night's rest. The pain was so terrible. Yet every time the door of the church was open, there she was. Every time it came time to sing songs, there she came and led singing. So faithful. And she came forward that night, never told anybody what was wrong. And we put that cloth in her hand and prayed for her in the name of Jesus Christ. That next morning she came to church smiling and happy. And when it came time to lead singing, she walked up there and she said, I want to tell everyone something. For months now, it has hurt me to even stand here and sing. Last night, I got the first good night's sleep I have gotten in months. Because as soon as that cloth touched my body, immediately all the pain left me. And I was healed. To this day, she has not experienced